it's Rebecca the Book Nester, and I came on because I think I might have fell into a lot of hype and sometimes we get really excited in the community and we see something going and we think this is great and these were one of the purchases that I made uh, recently and I really apologize because as with everyone else this is a really difficult name to pronounce uh, Shipper Farben is as close as I'm going to get and I'm probably not going to refer to them again. These are the pencils I'm talking about. There are 72 pencils. You may have seen these around color too. People are getting them. They're talking about them. They're doing brief little reviews and they're liking them. And they're talking about really what a bargain they are. And I think that's where the hype has gone. I'm not sure about the bargain numbers. I would say they are a very moderately priced or appropriately priced or a um, a budget friendly uh, pencil. I do think they are to that. But if you're looking for really, really inexpensive, come to find out upon doing some just little research a little bit, once I have got already bought them, probably should have done it beforehand, but um, well, no, I can't say that. I am not unhappy that I bought these pencils. I actually do like them, and I'll get more into that. But they are about the same cost as Prismacolor for their um, uh, for the Pr Prismacolor 72 set as well. So when I went out and did a little research, like I was saying, these when I bought them were $29 plus a little bit of change, and the Prismacolors are right now being shown at 25 and I think the regular price is around 28 So 72 pencils, apples to apples, maybe. Now the difference is these are oil-based. And of course, all pencils have a little bit of wax and a little bit of oil. It's just a percentage. Um, but these pencils are a lot of different colors that I don't have. My hardest thing with my Prismas, which you know I love my Prismas, is to have pastel colors and be able to do really deep and vivid pictures, even with a pastel color, without just being extremely light and never being able to do the blending that I like. So these are a wonderful little set, but what I want to do first is kind of go through them, but I want to tell you what I'm doing for my review. So I have the 72. I have colored in numerous, I've been using these for about two and a half, three weeks, and what I want to do is use them in all my different books, particularly with the different papers. So I've used Romantic Country, I've colored in Lucy Sunshine's Rory Seasons coloring book, um, this is one of my new coloring books that I'm absolutely loving, is The Fairy Nouveau by Herb Lin uh, Leonhard, maybe, or Leonard. Uh, he has some beautiful books. They're $6 a piece. Fantastic, but we'll be looking at that. And then last, I wanted to do a bit of an experiment in my secret garden with my Prismacolors with these newer pencils and see if they blend and work together. So, again, this is the set that we are, are looking at. And <clears throat> those are the books and the testing pages that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and start going through the books and kind of talking about the different testing pages in just a moment. But the first thing I want to show you, all these subsequent pages you're about to see, and let me go ahead and see if I can get them all out. All of the subsequent pages that you're about to see have been done without me sharpening these because I think that is one of their strongest points about them. Your higher end pencils like your Faber-Castell, uh, your Luminance, uh, I'm sure your Holbein's, I have no idea, but they all require less sharpening than, and, and you don't eat them up as much as you do that soft core Prisma color. And I know I go through my Prisma colors, you know, as far as sharpening them, and I do like a, a really strong point, uh, a, a very small point for getting into details. And so with Prisma, you get a small enough point, sometimes they break. Again, it's a soft core. It's a totally different type of pencil. It's not blaming them in any way. I love my Prismas. Um, but if you look, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. If you look at the tops of my pencils, this is almost how they came. Now, I have not sharpened any of them for all of these subsequent pages. The one that's probably been used the most, uh, let's see if I can find it, there it is, let's see, is it gonna, there it goes, is going to be my white. I mean, it's almost gone. I really need to sharpen it. And I have to tell you, the urge to sharpen it was huge the whole time I was doing this. But if you look at all the other ones, and I've used 
every one of these colors because I've also swatched every one of these. So let's see, this that's the first tray. And again, what I love about the this set, and it is definitely a plus, let's see if I can get you back out, is the real light colors. They have gorgeous yellows. They have wonderful flesh colors. Um, one thing they don't have is a very vivid red, which was a little surprising for me. So your next tray, and again, notice all my tips of all of these. I have used blues, and you'll see my blues and purple, probably this tray, I've used definitely, let's see, this first one I have used a lot, and this other one, let's see, is it this one? Nope. That's the one next to it. These two, and you'll see it in a, just a little bit, these two right here I've used a lot and I'm still able to use them and have not sharpened them. So I would say that is a huge strength for these pencils is I don't need to sharpen them. And I've used them a great deal. And we'll get talking about that later. And then the last one is they have beautiful greens and some nice, what I would call more of your neutral colors. So really great colors. Again, none of these, let's see, I mean, they are all still as if they just came to me. I just can't get over that they, I've not had to sharpen them to do as much as I have. So I'm going to put these back in and then we're going to start walking through some of the different um, pages that I did. I'm going to show you my color swatching that I did as well. And I just really want you to try to remember how much coloring you're seeing with this and listen to how many layers I'm doing. And I might even do a color demo at the end I think is what I'm going to try to do to kind of show you how I have to layer up with these pencils. But this is not a bashing. This, uh, this is actually a very supportive uh, I really like these pencils, but they are a different kind. If you're thinking they're going to replace your Prismas, they're a very different handling pencil than that. And if you think they're going to replace your Polychromos, which I really think these pencils are so much closer to a Polychromos than they are a Prisma Premier, definitely. I think they handle very similarly. Uh, they even reacted in Johanna Basford's book very, very similarly to whenever I use my favorite Castells in them. So. Let's get on with looking at the pictures and talking about what I experienced during that time. So here are my swatches. I'm going to take them out of my plastic sleeve. So if anybody's interested, I keep all my swatches just in a little three ring binder and I use the protective sleeve. So um, as you can see, there's all my swatches. It's easy to go find them. They're all together. And yes, I know I'm ridiculous. I do swatch a lot, but I think it's really important for me when I'm first learning about a pencil or a marker to really know what color I'm reaching for. And then here's some printouts of other things that I want to do, some things that I've already done. Uh, somebody might recognize him from last year. Up oh, and there's Yoda. So <clears throat> I just use the protective sleeves to slide them in and out. Uh, it just keeps so that they aren't going to get worn and torn. I do most of my swatching on the uh, cardstock that I get from Walmart. I'll put that information down below. Um, Sometimes I think it might be a little bit of a disservice because the cardstock is not typically what I'm coloring on. However, just doing it on regular copy paper isn't fair to most of them either, but I found that I like the sturdiness of these. So let's see if I can get down in there a little bit. We're going to try to zoom in on some of these lighter colors. So as I was saying before, one of the things I really love about this set is there is a lot of creamy, beautiful yellows. Uh, that can go down. Now most of these colors that you're seeing, this is after several, several attempts with my pencils as far as going and layering and layering. And this is, I still feel they're intense and that's why I really like them, 
but they're not really heavy duty dark. They're great for pastels. And this is something my Prismacolor coloring has been missing. And one of the reasons I even consider getting Holbein's is for their pastels. And I still might go out and try to buy the Holbein only pastel set, just because I'm always looking for those lighter colors. Because most of my coloring is, I think, very, very dark. Um, again, remember that everything you just saw, all the pictures that I just kind of paraded through, um, and this whole swatching was done without sharpening my pencils. So basically you keep going down and you can see all the other colors. So they are really beautiful colors. Again, I'm going to zoom in because right here, I think this is an important set. Great for shading and doing different, uh, uh, skin colors. Um, more probably of your lighter skin. However, over here, this 022 and 018. And that's something I probably did not show, now that I think about it, is each one of those pencils has a number on it. It does not have a name, it has a number. I don't care about not having a name, uh, because I swatch all mine, and so the numbers mean more to me. And so this is swatched exactly as they were came in my set. Uh, and because I have it, Sneak, a little sneaky feeling that they're going to stay in that tin um, for a while anyway uh, while I get knowing them this is perfect doesn't have to be a number order however one of the things I wanted to show you was here was my attempting at blending so, so one of the reasons that I really like my sample sheets is that I'm learning how to use them and this is something I designed myself it's just a PowerPoint um, is that I can do things like this. I have that extra space. And so what this is, is this is blending the one above and this color. So 014 and 013. I just chose those two and said, can they blend? Again, being an oil-based uh, pencil, which feels a lot like a Faber-Castell, I want to see what the blending looked like. So if we look down here, some more of the colors. And again, I did the same thing. So a beautiful range of pinks and lovely light purples, which I'm really, really happy to have because dark purples I have a lot of and even intense pinks I have a lot of, but I really like this range. And then our second set, because there's 36 on each one of these. Oops, let me turn it over. Ta -da, is here. So now you start getting your blues and greens. Now the blues are my new color of difficulty. <laughs> So yellows have been very challenging in that I have a very certain kind of yellow I love to have, and it's that creamy, buttery, uh, light yellow. Uh, blues, I'm having a horrible time finding, other than in luminance, some really beautiful light blue colors. And even this set has some lovely light blue. And by that, what I mean is a lot of my colors, if I get them light in Prisma, the Prisma start turning kind of like this green. There's like a green tint and not so much of a blue. This set is different in that I do feel I have some great range of true blues. Even going here to this, this feels more blue than it does green. And then you move into your t turquoises and then into your greens. And I have plenty of turquoise type base, well, things that have a greenish blue tint instead of a bluish green tint, I guess, is what I'm looking for uh, in my Prismas. And in this one, I'm kind of balancing it out. So I am happy about that. And then you finish it up. This is basically, and if you see that little number three, that just tells me, if you look right here, this is basically the third tray everything that's included on that. And so I really like the neutrals. The grays are fine. They are a little intense. I would love to see one more lighter, but you know, that is me using these pencils very, very light to begin with and then coloring. So if you see that shine kind of like here, that is the lightest color that I can get with the pencil. It's usually a one layer. If I wanted to keep that light blue, I would just need to add white. And that's probably why my white is so... <laughs> Is, is so uh, used on this set so far. And the one that I want to sharpen as quick as I get done with this review. <laughs> so those are my swatches. Again, remember that these swatches were all done as well as all that coloring with that minimal wear on those pencils. I really think that's obviously, because I keep talking about it, <laughs> I think it's, a, it's kind of an important attribute. So the first picture that I'm gonna talk about is there in my Romantic Color, a Fantasy Coloring Book. I've already shown you the picture. It is not completed. I will finish it hopefully at some point, but I really wanted to play with these. And again, one of the things is I was looking for light, vivid pastel colors, and I think these really deliver. Um, I don't normally 
do these type of colorings. If you look, let me see if I can find my other one that is probably more typical of my style. But I wanted to start being able to, let's see if I can find it. Why is it when you're looking for a page, you can never find it? There you go. So this page is more my style. As you can see, it's really dark. Uh, not dark as in it doesn't have any light colors in it, but it's very intense. And most of the colors kind of have a really dark base. There's not a real pastel look to this page. Even the yellow of her dress is about as light as I can get. But if you look at that yellow, and let's compare it to the yellow of this house, that's night and day for me. <laughs> yeah, one looks like they're in the night and the other's in the day. I love them both, but I really wanted to have more range to be able to do a little bit lighter, but still get that intense feeling of color. Um, I love how I can control these pencils. However, the number one caveat that I have learned with these pencils, you have to do it in layers. These behave a lot more like Faber-Castells. It is layer upon layer. If you go to force it and push down, I actually feel like the pencil slips it and it's not putting pigment down at that point. You cannot, unlike Prismacolors, if I bear down on a Prismacolor, I can get instantly that dark color. This is not what's gonna happen with these. It's almost like, nope. But if I want to just color and do it very lightly, which is relaxing in the hand, so much more pigment goes down in that first layer in subsequent layers, the light pressure. I mean, I am just barely putting over there. I couldn't get over. So it makes it for more relaxing coloring once I got used to that. But to get any darker, shade of that you have to do layer upon light layer upon light layer so these are layering pencils again it felt so similar to Faber Castells particularly when we get into uh, Johanna Basford's coloring book all right so because Romantic Country has the most beautiful buttery paper I have tried, you know, my Prismas go amazing on it. absolutely love it. I mean, the paper is the stellar. So for me, this and, um, you know, not even Johanna Bassard, probably Romantic Country and was it Monet Bonheur, the, the something in the garden, can't remember what that is, or Rhapsody in the Forest, the Japanese based ones. Those two, those two coloring books have like, or, or series, have the most amazing buttery paper and it does really well. So now we need to challenge it with the ones that are more realistic. And by that, we're talking creative space paper, uh, Dover paper, um, you know, that type of thing. And I think here with this one, Lacey Sunshine, I think her books are, are very similar in that they feel very like creative space. And so you're going to see white uh, periodically, you know, through them, getting them to, to, to blend down usually means I have to bring my Gamsol. So this picture is all Prismacolor and I would need my Gamsol to do. So I wanted to do a page in this because it's not the buttery paper, you know, it's not the, the most perfect. It's, I still actually like these papers and I like the books in them. So are the books that I get with this type of paper in them. Uh, so this is my wintry type scene of little Rory. And this is, again, all these pages are done with nothing but the new pencils, the Shipper, <laughs> Shipper Fabrens. Yeah, okay, the ones we're talking about. And overall, again, the layering was really, really necessary, even with these books. If I try to push down, it almost skipped. It didn't put a darker layer, but I could get these really great darker layers and all the shading. I had a lot more control, but I did feel that I needed to kind of use those layers. So I do feel these pencils, like the Faber-Castell, are very much for layering. And if you can work with Faber-Castells, and you, the Polychromos is what I'm talking about. So if you can work with the Polychromos and you like the Polychromos, this is a less expensive set that I think behaves very similar. All right, and then the, the next one that I wanted to show is, uh, it's a new artist to me, uh, which that's not saying much. I have a tendency to be way behind the curve on books and stuff. But I happened to find him through Etsy. I first found the Etsy page that had him on there. And then I found that he was on Amazon and I learned a little bit more about him. And he has some great art. And it's her, and I'm going to say his name is Herb Leonard or Leonard. Um, beautiful, 
Nouveau, Art Nouveau type. So think of the old posters we used to see from the 20s and 30s, the big advertising posters, and just that whole kind of dark and deep. And that's what his pictures are based on. And if you go out and look at his pictures, he, I mean, they're just gorgeous. So this is one of his pictures he's actually created. He's a children's book illustrator, I believe. Uh, and then he's put out these books. So again, the paper, so this is put out by the Prancing Pony. And it's not quite... It's a little smoother paper than the Creative Space, but it's about the same weight. So, um, you know, a little bit heavier than regular copy paper. Um, I actually really like the the uh, the colors in it, or the paper in it. So we're going to flip all the way back. If you get a chance, do go out and look at his. So I just did the last one in the book, and it's our lovely little snowflake fairy. Um, and... So this paper was a little bit more of a challenge, and I also did another step. So one of the ways I like to blend my Prismacolors is with Gamsol, um, with odorless mineral spirits. And I wanted to see if layer and layer and layering, if that would work with these oil base, because again, what's happening with the Gamsols is melting the wax and moving that pigment more freely around. And since Prismas are primarily wax-based, you get a lot of that movement. So I was interested to see what oil base would do. And it moves a little, but not a lot. So again, this has so many layers. And if you look at it, I mean, there's tons of blues and pinks and purples. And that's why I showed you the purple and the light blue before, because I used it in this page alone, just tons. And also in the last page we looked at, a lot of the blue. So this is how it behaved. But if you can, take a moment and really look at those wings. And that's where the blending power really came in. And I thought, wow, I do, I love these. I couldn't get the deep, dark intensity. What I probably would think about doing is going back in maybe even with a blue marker uh, for the what's almost supposed to be black, just to get, oops, sorry about that, to get a little bit more of an intense dark blue color. That is absolutely the darkest blue I could get with the colors in the set. And again, I wanted to use just the set of pencils, nothing else. Um, but beautifully, beautifully done. This one I was starting to get frustrated because I really wanted to do more in the hair, but I would need a uh, more of a point and by that time I had worn my pencils down but again for your sake I really wanted to show you how much I colored. I have to tell you there is probably down in this part particularly with the darker blue and we are probably talking six to nine layers if not more uh, to try to get more of that intense. Again it's a process I love I'm okay with it and I do really like these colors. I don't think I, I almost wish I would have have gotten a second book and done the same thing in Prismacolors and I think what you would see is that I can get much more light intense colors here than I can with the Prismas which would be a dark intense color but um, a lot of fun to do love this artwork in, in this book so and the last and probably most challenging of the papers is going back to what I just reviewed for you guys and I will have the video link in about this one is this coloring day planner. Um, as I've mentioned, the paper is quite a challenge. The paper actually feels like it has a slight, almost like a wax film on the top. I mean, really, really light. I mean, I don't want to over exaggerate it, but it is really challenging. And so think about it. You kind of have like a wax cover on it, and then you're trying to get in there with an oil-based pencil. And this, again, proved to be a little bit of a challenge. So what I've done is any of the, and remember, I've got still a month of, of June, uh, January, June, goodness, jump six months, crazy, don't need to do that, um, where I've started it and I have the whole month to do. But I just want to point out something here. So if you look here at the lightest green in that section, it's kind of really vivid. This is the first layer. And there's quite a distinct, so anywhere you see this light green, that is me just going in with the same pin, the same main color and starting my first layers. This one over here, we're probably, again, talking eight or nine layers. This is probably where I learned the biggest lesson about not fighting with those pencils and just doing it light. This is a process. It's not a quick coloring. I need to build up the colors and they work best. And to be honest, the pencils themselves are a little bit bigger round than my other pencils, my Prismas are, and bigger than the Polychromos are. And so even holding them, I caught myself holding them rather tight. And then I would kind of fatigue because I was holding them tight because they're kind of big. Once I got used to it and really realized I need to do really light layers, I held further down the pencil and it was much more comfortable. So here are just some of the, the, 
the finished ones that I've done here in this uh, in my journal and again we're talking layers upon layers but because I'm doing this once a week it's it's been great but I really want to see if by the end of this if I found a different way to work with these uh, pencils or how I really feel about them at the end of the year so my journal is going to be nothing but those pencils that's the idea so again those are all the different variances of paper that I experienced the last thing I want to do is actually show you in Johanna Bassford's uh, me showing you how many layers to get this intensity of color that I eventually got and in Johanna Basford I also utilized some of my Prisma to see how they work together so I thought what I would do is kind of show you what it took to go from this which is only one layer to that which is I don't know how many and just to kind of show you what I mean about layering with these pencils and again I have to go and use my my swatches to really feel comfortable about the colors that I'm choosing. So we're going to go back over here and look at my swatches. Let's see if I get that right there. And what I'm going to start with is this number 67. So we're going for a terracotta look. So definitely the 67, the 68, and then maybe even the 20 to give it a little more brown. And then I use some grays as well. So the bigger thing that I'm trying to point out is the layering and how light you have to go so as not to force these pencils. So I just wanted to, like I said, so this is layers. This is also a combination of using my Prisma colors. And that's what this whole page is. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So my uh, Joanna Bassford, I've done primarily in Prisma colors, and I did use some of my Polychromos on this. And so since these uh, Schiffer Farbens that I'm using right now, that I'm kind of doing this on, this whole review on, to me behave so similar to the Polychromos, I want to see also how they blend and mix. So. Uh, giving me almost like a watercolor look. Now I did use, so this is a series of layer upon layer of the oil-based uh, farbens and then some uh, use of a polychro, uh, sorry, Prisma Premier, uh, Prisma Colors, the soft core, and then uh, Gamsol kind of putting it all together. So let's just start with this little little guy down here. And I'm going to bring it up just a little. So this is my this way I can stand. So I got a standing desk so that uh, I can stand sometimes while I'm doing my coloring. Let's see, let's make sure that we're in in frame so you can see it. And again, notice how far back I'm holding my pencil. I am holding it quite a ways back and that's how I keep a looser grip on it because they are a little bit thicker than my, polychromo, uh, my polychromos or my uh, Prismas, uh, I was catching myself really grabbing hold of it and holding quite tightly. Uh, I am a person who prefers smaller barrels on my pens, on my pencils, all that. So this took a little bit of a learning curve and I am doing this so incredibly lightly. So this is just a second layer. So we're now on to layer number two uh, because I've already put one down. downsides to this uh, this set is they do not have individuals available uh, you cannot buy them individually and I've always been worried about buying sets that I can't get the individuals and that's because I have a tendency to find certain colors that I use a lot of so with my polychromos uh, I'm sorry for my Prisma premieres 
Uh, I use a lot of the marine green. I think I've went through two already of those, if not, and I've got three standing on the side because I know I use it as a base dark green for so much. Uh, the same with like my yellows that I found that I think it's the jasmine and the canary yellow in the prismas. Use those again and again on, you know, for myriad of different reasons, not just for yellow, but I use them to change other hues of other colors. And so needing to be, you know, if I have like those favorite colors, I felt like I needed to be able to replace them. This 72 set is the only one that the maker has made so far. Uh, I don't have any contacts to contact anybody. I don't have that kind of coloring clout. Uh, I have heard on other videos that somebody said that they've spoken to the maker and they're looking into doing individuals because that's one of the reasons I won't really entertain getting Holbein's at this point. Uh, at least the full set because you can't get the individuals and that just is you know that's a problem for me if I can get the individuals re that would be worth it for a you know two hundred three hundred dollar set of pencils that's quite hefty if I'm having to you know and I'm not going to buy a whole nother set to replace one pencil um, because obviously in that set there's a lot of pencils I wasn't using as quickly so that's one of the reasons I like the Prismas. I also have started trying the Luminance ones, and I'm liking those as well. Uh, and I can get those at Dick Blick individually, so who knows in the scheme of things, that might be something that I'll look into. But for right now, that's one of the downsides with this set is you really, really can't get another uh, a replacement pencil. You can't buy, get them individually. As you can see, and this is the Johanna Basford Secret Garden, so think of the paper. Um, the paper's doing really well with letting me layer. These pencils let me do a lot of layering. introduce my Prisma colors just a little bit. We're going to use number 944 which is your terracotta in your Prisma color. So this is where I wanted to experiment to see how they interact with Prismas and at this stage uh, there's a good lay down. I, again I'm not pushing. I'm not you know I'm definitely not burnishing. I don't want to have a burnish. Um, I'm just putting it down a layer of color. And again, this was purely to see, you know, because I only have 72 in the other, uh, and I don't have as many really intense darker colors in the other set. This was to see if I could work them together. Uh, and not to mention, like I said, I've already started doing uh, Prismas in my Johanna Basford Secret Garden, and I'm wondering if I can use these. Because uh, I really like that terracotta look and I'd like to do almost all these pots in terracotta. I'm going to bring in my odorless mineral spirits. The brand that I use is, is the Gamsol brand. 
and see what we can do about getting it to merge. Though I have to say that the blending of them right now, they look pretty darn good. I don't even know if I need to do that. I some research actually let me see if I can get those numbers for you so I was looking to see the cost comparison and so if I say that these pencils feel and act a lot more like a polychromo so this is me putting on my odorless mineral mineral spirit so you get a little bit of mixture but I don't know how much of that is just the poly the prisma premiere melting but it almost turns it into where it looks like a pretty intense watercolor which I like um, so if I compare these pencils that I've been using, the Farbens, I'm going to say to me they are closer to the Polychromos. So the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And they behave very similar. Um, I, you know, I can't talk about all the colors because there's only 72 and I know uh, Polychromos go up to 120. But they behave so similar to that 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 to me is more the equivalent. And they are oil-based of you know, equivalent to something I've used. And a set, so if we look at the set of 60 polychromos, they are priced at oh, $73. A set of 72 of these is 29. So yes, is there a savings for an oil-based that acts a lot like the polychromos in my hands? Now remember, I am a very much an amateur. <laughs> I am just a hobby colorist. I just like being in my little coloring books. I'm not an artist. It's not artist grade. I, light fastness doesn't mean anything for me. This is purely as a hobby. I just want good tools that I can get really pretty blends with. That's how I'm comparing it to the Faber-Castell. So again, that kind of shows you how many layers it took. I'm going to come out just a hair to get the equivalent between this and that. And remember, we started, see if we can really come out see if I can get if you look we started right up here with these two that's one layer so the comparison of these two with these two you just saw what that kind of took to get that deep intense color and that's really light layering in between and also mixing with polychromos which they did a pretty good job but again I kind of got a watercolor look instead of a real smooth blend um, so going back to these and cost comparison we're going to come out so going back to these as cost comparisons as I was saying there's 72 in this 10 uh, 72 in a Prisma uh, Premier soft core is 25.56 now these are all as of January 2018 prices again colors this one I just really love all the pastel type colors but again, if we go all the way and we're trying to compare to what I felt like it acted most like is the you know, 60 set of the polychromos and that was 7350. So from an artist standpoint, I think the, the polychromos probably has light fatness, fastness and all of that um, to their advantage, whereas I don't believe these have been really tested for light fastness. They haven't been around long enough. Maybe that's it. They haven't done that testing. So I can't talk to that. But for a hobby colorist and all these wonderful different type papered, you know, everything from secret garden to creative space style paper, you know, to the incredibly, incredible, buttery, romantic country, um, these pencils I really have enjoyed using. Uh, I'm glad that I bought them. I am concerned that, you know, I can't buy replacement pencils, but at this rate, having colored everything that we've seen today and not sharpened any of them, and they're still, you know, in this kind of shape, you know, I mean, <laughs> these things are going to last me for a while. So I don't think I need to be complaining too much. And maybe by that time they might start having some that are uh, uh, individually sold. I know that the light green and the light blue are probably two that I will use a lot. Well, I hope you found this helpful. 
some of an interesting 